Simple and Out has a wonderful feature called Scheduled Statuses, which allows you to schedule status updates to occur at a future time, as well as to advertise those to users that have permission to see your upcoming schedule. While this feature is amazing, uh, sometimes it can be a bit of a hassle because what happens if you're one of these people who has a calendar and you have a lot of things on your schedule? And to make life better, what Simple and Out provides for is a great first-party calendar integration where we can take a look at your calendar and we can set your scheduled statuses to match. So today, let's take a look at our first-party calendar integration built into Simple and Out. Uh, so this takes any calendar from the iCal standard. It is the universal standard utilized by all the calendar providers from Google to Microsoft to Apple to you name it. Uh, so we're right here in simpleandout.com. I'm currently on settings. And then once you click settings, I'm on calendars. And here's where you can add calendars. Now you can have more than one calendar feed uh, if you wish to. Uh, let's go ahead and add our first calendar now. So we have some pretty important settings we need to set up when we're configuring a calendar. Now, before we get into these settings, just a couple of things right off the top. First of all, your organization has to have scheduled statuses enabled. We have an entirely separate video on scheduled statuses if you want to know more about that and the permissions, uh, but you have to have that feature enabled. You also have to have the ability to be able to manage your own scheduled statuses. If your administrator has taken that permission away from you, uh, you won't be able to integrate a calendar. And uh, so as long as you have those permissions, though, this is an option for you. So since you can have more than one calendar, we'll have to give this a name. We're just going to call this My Calendar. And then your iCal URL. This is the specific URL that you need to give us uh, that we will be consulting with. That URL has to be public. So in other words, we have to be able to access it without authentication so that we can get access to it. Um, and if you don't know where this URL is, we have a handy link here where we will show you where you can get this in the really popular calendar providers like Google's uh, Calendar or Microsoft Outlook um, as examples. I have a calendar URL I'm going to toss in here. Now, once you toss in this URL, we'll immediately go look at it and we'll make sure that the URL is valid. In this case, you can see it found that it was valid. It even found four events that's going to pull in right away for me. So this is perfect. Now, active, this is whether the calendar is active or not. You can have a calendar added and you can deactivate it and then reactivate it later if you wish. That's an option. And now we get to the meat, the heart, really, of what calendar integration does. So when you're looking at a calendar event, how would Simple and Out know what kind of status that event should be, right? Like if you see something like a dentist appointment, that's probably an out event. But if you see a meeting, is that an in event? Is it a busy event? Is the meeting off site that you might have it set as a remote event? How would Simple and Out know? And the answer is what Simple and Out does is it will look at the name of the calendar event itself. And if it encounters one of our status words in the name of the event, that is the status it will become. So for example, if you have an event called vacation, that will become a vacation event. If you have a, uh, an event called uh, working remote, that would become a remote event. Now, if for some reason you don't find, we don't find any of these words at all in the name of the event, then this setting will dictate what status it becomes. And so this allows you a lot of power when it comes to putting events on your calendar to get the desired outcome you're looking for within Simple and Out. Uh, but it also allows you then to choose a really good default based on how you use your calendar. And everybody tends to use their calendars a little bit differently. So for me, in my case, my calendar is usually full of events that are uh, out events. They're events that are gonna take me out of the office. So I'm gonna leave this to out, but of course you can set this as you wish. And then finally down here, Calendars can have events that have specific times, right? Start times and end times. But calendars can also have events that just span a day, all day long events. And so if you have an all day event that we encounter in your calendar, uh, these settings allow you to choose when that event will start and end within the confines of simple in out. Uh, this avoids those awful situations where we would have to be updating your statuses at midnight, um, a time most people aren't looking at the board anyways. Um, and so this allows you to choose. So if you have an all day event, when would you like that event to start? So maybe I want my events to start around 8 a.m. And then, I don't know, 10 o'clock seems a little late. Let's maybe make it six o'clock. So now if I have an all day event, instead of updating at midnight to midnight, 
Simple and out will worry about updating you from 8 a.m. till 6 p.m. That makes a lot more sense in the confines of when normal people are going to be working on my board. So we're going to go with this. And then, of course, we need to know your time zone just because, of course, time is dependent on the zone you're in. Um, in my case, I'm in Central. So here we go. This looks really good to me. Um, I like these defaults. Let's go ahead and create our calendar. Now, when we create a calendar, Simple and Out will go consult the calendar right away and grab some schedules. And then we will look at your calendar feed once every hour, looking for new events, events that have changed. And we will look from today all the way to 60 days from now, basically two months into the future, and grab all the calendar events and set scheduled statuses for those events. And that will perpetually go then every hour uh, going forward to keep you up to date. So as you're changing events on your calendar, uh, you'll see Simple and Out match those. So let's see what this got us because we know that we had four events on the calendar. So I'm gonna go back out to scheduled statuses. So Sarah Smith, I'm gonna look at my scheduled statuses. And you can see, look at this, it found a bunch of things off my calendar. So here I have lunch break with Paul on Monday from noon till one o'clock. And we can see that this is a break status. And it's a break status because, of course, we encountered the word break. And because we found the word break, it becomes break status. Uh, here we have a busy meeting uh, Wednesday from 8 a.m. till 9 o'clock. Um, and again, this is a busy status because the word busy was encountered in the title. Working from home. And you can see here we have parenthetically remote. Uh, because the word remote is there, that's a remote status, working from home. And you can see that was an all-day event. Um, and that is February 14th from 8 a.m. until 6 p.m. Even though it was an all-day event, it will now show up as 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. because, of course, that is what we set in our calendar settings for all-day events. And then you can see vacation all week from February 17th till February 21st. So that's a week-long vacation from Monday to Friday. And you can see the Monday one starts at 8 a.m. and the other one at 6 p.m. because there was an all-day event for five days. And this, because the word vacation is in it, becomes a vacation event. So this is really great. And this sucks in all of these events again, and it will check my calendar every hour to make sure it gets the desired outcomes. So that's calendar integration with Simple and Out. It's a great way to pre-populate your scheduled statuses for you automatically for our users that love to live in their calendars.